Hello. Uh, on the story about my stroke recovery, um, last I talked about my wife and having her stick with me and having her make a decision that she couldn't take the position as an office manager because she didn't realize uh, how bad I was. And uh, I didn't actually realize or was uh, even totally aware of how bad I was. Because one, I couldn't see. I couldn't see how far I could walk. I couldn't see the TV. I couldn't even barely see my wife's face. Um, so rehab went on from there, and they continued to try and to get me to walk. Uh, of course, uh, a walker was uh, what I was looking at next, and they gave me a walker to walk around. They trained me to use one. Um, it helped, but boy, I had to use that. Um, I depended upon that walker quite significantly. Um, and I was able to walk a distance with it. I still was quite fatigued. One of the things that uh, fatigue was definitely very, uh, uh, one of the biggest problems with recovering from the stroke. You're always tired. You just don't want to do anything. Uh, and when you do something, it uh, takes a lot out of you. Um, but fatigue, the, the idea behind fatigue, though, is you got to keep pushing yourself. Um, not beyond uh, where you're completely ready to collapse, but beyond a, a point where you're tired, but then push yourself a little bit more, and eventually you could do more. Um, so continuing on with the rehab, I was uh, finally able to use both arms to hold onto a walker, as I said earlier, and uh, start walking. Um, and what they were always trying to do was to get me to walk not like Frankenstein, uh, so to speak. Uh, Frankenstein, you know, where they had the, just sort of each step was boom, plotted down, plotted down. So one of the things they were saying is don't walk like Frankenstein. It was a, sort of a wide-based gait because I had the uh, stroke of my cerebellum. My gait, walking, was really unsteady, and I was unsteady. So I would have to put my legs out way far out to keep me steady. I couldn't walk normally like in, in in a midline, right? Like so if you were to, you know, pull me over for driving a car, which I couldn't do at the time, they I would be like I looked like I was drunk, basically. Um so that was one of the challenges to get me to walk normally, um, without looking like I'm drunk, my arms out and I'm trying to go like this. Um and that took a great deal of time and a great deal of energy and they never let me fall in uh, rehab, but afterwards when I was working on it, and believe it, I still had to work on it when I was home, uh, I fell quite often. Um, but back to being at rehab, again, uh, eventually with speaking, I was able to speak a little louder, uh, and my vocal cord, again, was paralyzed, so they had to make sure I wasn't going to aspirate, in other words, swallow food into my lungs, or breathe food into my lungs. And that would cause a lung infection and death. Um, so what they did was they actually took what's called a video fluoroscopy. In other words, they would videotape with x-rays to see on a camera, on a, a TV screen, uh, that how my throat would move up and down and whether food would actually almost go into my lungs or not. And I would have to learn certain strategies on how to swallow food so I'd ensure that the food wouldn't go down. And they had to use, in order for them to see the food, they had to use what was called, a, it was a, a barium, uh, radioactive barium. And it tasted pretty horrible. Um, and they mixed it with potatoes and mashed potatoes and stuff to make it sort of reasonable, but it was cold. So basically I had to turn my head and swallow this way, swallow, look up, all sorts of ways to figure out how I could swallow um, without causing the food to go into my lungs. And it took, probably they did a test four or five weeks after my stroke, and then they did another test four or five weeks after that. And eventually, I was able to move my head in such a way that I could swallow food with no chance of it getting into my lungs. And once I was able to do that, I was able to start eating more solid food, which was quite remarkable. It, I can't tell you not being able to eat a hamburger, just a simple hamburger, or a french fry, or a potato, or whatever, 
for eight, nine, ten weeks and able to finally do it, but you had to turn your head at the sw- you know, before I swallowed. I didn't care because to have solid food for the first time in, in a long time was truly heaven on earth, I have to say. And I was very grateful that I was able to do that.